Hello, so we've got a call here. I've not actually heard this one, so I'm going to be reacting to this as it goes. It looks like an interesting call. It's Matthew phoning in with evidence for the existence of the soul. So I'm really looking forward to this. Let's go. Him who wants to demonstrate that a soul exists. So welcome, Matthew. You're on with Forrest and Matt. Hey, Matt. How's it going? Pretty good. You hear me? This, this will be fun because you're not just calling in to try to prove that God exists. You're trying to prove a soul exists. And I'm on record as saying that the soul is the single most obvious dead concept in all of theology. So Now, that's what I don't like about the way Matt handles these calls, that he's poisoning the well before the guys even got going. So I'm not too, really too sure whether that's a constructive thing to do. So you got your well, work for, cut out for you, prove, so I will sit back and, and let you demonstrate that souls exist. I can't prove that a soul exists in the same sense I can't prove that music exists, you know? Like, I can, I, I can listen to music. It's so strange. And I can sense it's so strange that you called in because you want to argue that a soul exists. And when I give you the opportunity, right off the bat, you're like, well, I can't prove that a soul exists the way I can prove music exists. So here's where we're going to start. Because it's, it's similar, right? Hang on. Like, Hang on. Here's where we're going to start. Define soul and tell me why you think I should believe that that is real. Well, I mean, I'm just going to ask you genuinely, right? Like, no, sir. You... Hang on. Just Let me try please. this again. I'm going to mute you for a second. What I would like for you to do is to define soul and then present your reason or argument for why you think Forrest and I should agree with you that what you have defined is real. That doesn't require you asking us any questions at all. So start I'm by a, defining I'm soul. New... I'm a new caller to the show, so I don't know exactly how this works, but I just explained um, I, to I you, Matthew. We're having Matthew, a Matthew, I, like I just explained Matthew, 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 can <laughs> you hear me? Right, did you just say I was being rude yeah, to you? Oh, you're being super, like, you know, demanding that I do this and that. I thought I'm just going to ask Wait, a question. Wait, Matthew, <laughs> our show. Are you saying, Matthew, are you saying I was being rude to you? Yeah, you're being like very like dominating. <laughs> well, go fuck yourself, cool. Matthew, fine, right? because like, I patiently sat here and calmly explained what I'd like you to do in order to make this conversation go better, something that I've been doing for nearly 20 years. I wasn't being rude at all. I was trying to not allow you to waste my time or the audience's time and for you to have the best opportunity to present your case, which at the very outset, you have not only failed to do, but you called in to defend something and started by saying you couldn't. So I'm going to give you one more try without any whining or complaining that I'm being rude to you to define soul and then tell us why you think we should agree with you that your definition of soul is points to something that's real. Go. No, you're being disrespectful. Why should I talk to you? Get fucked. Go away. Stop Did wasting you my time, you whiny us, little bitch. Dude. Okay, so just some comments to round up on that video that we've just watched. I'd like to say that Matt would be um, a very poor mouse catcher. Now, there are different kinds of mice. Some mice, you can put a trap out for them, and they'll just literally go to it, and bang, they're dead. Not all mice are the same. Some are sneaky. Some you've got to devise special methods to finally trap and kill. And it's the same with Christians and theists that call in. They don't all respond to uh, the same strategy. So Matt being very regimental and saying, right, give me your definition and give me your syllogism. <clears throat> it's not going to catch every sneaky mouse. And I find it very unsatisfactory that callers are coming in and somebody wants to um, present an argument or at least um, present their reasons for believing in something like, for example, the soul or God. And because they're not prepared to play ball with Matt in his way, they're getting off the hook. They're being called jackasses. They're being hung, hung up on. And I find that unsatisfactory. If somebody com comes onto the show saying that they want to prove the existence of the soul, for me, the only satisfactory way of dealing with that 
is to leave them realizing that they've got absolutely no good reason for such a belief at all. And if you're going to be regimental with them and close them down and send them off with a jackass label on their forehead, that's not really going to do the job. So in this case, for example, he was not prepared to do things Matt's way. I think there would have been another there would have been another strategy to get out of him his reasons for believing in the existence of the soul that could have been dealt with, broken down, destroyed. And then he eventually could have been hung up on having been completely intellectually dismantled. So I don't find it satisfactory or clever at all that Matt is hanging up on people without properly dealing with them. So what could we get out of this call? He arrived and we only really got one thing from him, which is that he tried to say something and, that Matt, and then Matt cut him down. And I think he misunderstood what he was trying to say. He was trying to say that he couldn't, he could, he couldn't prove the soul any more than he could prove that music exists. So that's what we had. And um, I think what, what we could have done with this, if Matt had focused on that, he could have built on that and asked him, what does he mean? And I think that what he means is that um, he believes that he can't really prove that music exists and that the soul is a similar type of, it's like a, an analogy with music. Now, that can be debunked quite easily. Music doesn't exist in the same way that this cup exists, yeah? But it's got more reality to it than uh, a soul, how, however you want to define that as some kind of immaterial sort of ghost in the machine or whatever. There's more reality to music. I can demonstrate music playing, for example. We can say a lot about music. We know um, what music is. It conforms to certain characteristics. It's got rhythm. Um, it's got notation, scales, etc. It's got it. It could have melody. So we can identify what music is and music everywhere in the world is playing at one time or another in some kind of sense it exists in a way that we can't really demonstrate anything about the soul uh, we can't demonstrate anything at all about the soul all we can do is make assertions and make assumptions so there's more reality to to music we can we can demonstrate stuff about it uh, than there is about the soul so i absolutely disagree with him on that and it's unfortunate that matt didn't pick up on that and kind of tease out of him exactly what he meant because then he could have been completely debunked and sent on his way. But as it was, that just didn't happen. And I found it very unsatisfactory. I also thought that Matt should not be starting off calls and saying, well, I hear you here. I hear that you've come to prove the existence of the soul. And for me, you realize that that is the single most dead concept in philosophy. He's poisoning the well by doing that. It would be better to allow people to come on, make their case in within reason, whatever way they want to. Um, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been too happy about, he started to ask Matt a question. Matt wasn't having that. And to be honest, I wouldn't have that either. Um, that's why I, personally, I would never bother debating Darth Dawkins because I don't answer questions the theist comes to me and says, I want to prove the existence of God to you. I say, okay, go on then. And then they start asking me questions. No, um, you shouldn't have to ask me questions to prove the existence of your God. What you should do is lay out your evidence so that I could ex examine it. So I don't entertain questions from theists who want to either prove the existence of the soul or they want to prove the existence of their religion. They shouldn't have to ask me questions to prove the existence of something. If I discovered Bigfoot and I went to a panel and said, and I said, I've discovered Bigfoot. I can prove the existence of Bigfoot. And they said, okay, um, prove Bigfoot. And then I started asking them questions. How absurd would that be? If you want to prove the existence of something, you've got to make a case. And that doesn't involve asking other people questions. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have entertained that. I would have said, no, I'm not answering your questions. You said you can prove the existence of the soul. Give me your proof. Give me your evidence. So yeah, I absolutely agree with them on that. But I don't think he should have poisoned the well. I think that he should have been a bit more kind of subtle in his approach to this guy. And he should have he should have got that cue at the beginning about the music analogy that he was making. And he could have built something around that. And we could have had 
um, more of a constructive breakdown of his position and a complete intellectual dismissal at the end. So um, quite critical there on Matt. I wish he dealt with it differently and he's got to be a bit more flexible. Otherwise, all of these calls that come in, uh, people, theists who um, are not prepared to play the game his way, are just going to go away saying, oh, well, Matt wouldn't let me talk. I could have proven my God to him, but he wouldn't let me speak. And I think that you need a bit more flexibility than that, because I'm keen to see every theist, um, anybody who argues anything for the supernatural, either to prove their case or to be uh, sent away completely um, intellectually taken apart, which will benefit them because then hopefully they will reevaluate re their situation. And also it won't bolster the beliefs of other people out there, people who believe in things without good reason, such as the supernatural gods, etc. Okay, that's all for now. Let me know what you think of that. Bye for now.